Nuts and Humpty Dump Nuts, get out those seats and shake it because it is Monday, March 25th in the United States of America, and this is What Chaos. I'm DJ Bean, Sean DePaz is Sean DePaz, and Pete Blackburn is Pete Blackburn. Hi, Pete. Do we have Pete? Hello. Is he muted? I don't hear Pete. I hear him now. Pete? Hello? Hello? Ah, Hi. Hey, here. Shake Hi. it, Pete. Chicago right. Pete. Hello. I'm back. Okay. No pleasantries. Just kidding. Uh, we're starting a little late. We had some technical difficulties. We basically just had a practice run of the show. It was very good. Pete and Sean went to the Hockey East thing. I was away for the weekend. Sean got a Marcus Smart jersey. Gonna go really punch awesome. somebody in the face. Yeah. Pete was saying the Trump swag. I got a Marcus Smart jersey at the Hockey East tournament, which is yeah. one of the funniest things I've ever seen. If you're selling me a basketball jersey for $35, when I went in there to get a regular t-shirt for $35, I'm going to get the basketball jersey every single time. Hell Yeah. I've, I've, I've wanted to go to a basketball game with Sean. Hasn't happened yet. Yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, my uh, people throw Celtics tickets at me is uh, has been dwindling over the years. I used to get Celtics tickets thrown at me a lot. I don't get any tickets thrown at me for anything now anymore. Interestingly, I've been to three NBA games. Two of them have been Celtics games, and one of them was at the Garden. Wow. Do you think that that's a do you think that's a product of like the Celtics being really good and nobody wanting to give away the tickets, or do you think it's a product of people just being like uh my my friendship with DJ is on the out on, out on DJ. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it could be a combination of. Two, I mean, well, I used to get them uh, through a, a place where I was a full time employee. Now I'm a part time employee there, so I could see them being like, "We don't we don't got to impress this guy. Who cares?" <laughs> yeah, true. I do Fair. think I'm going to go to a game soon, though. Those Celtics, boy oh boy, they are good. If they were any better. Guys, they'd be the Washington Capitals because Sean DePaz has been telling us my for Washington weeks. Capitals. Actually, before we do a happy thing for Sean, we should uh, quickly uh, bury the Sabers. Sabers are dead. If you've been listening to recent episodes. You've been like, "Whoa, they're really excited about the Sabers." A lot of stuff happened over the weekend. Basically, the Oilers fucking murdered the Sabers. Is what happened. Like the Sabers beat the the Flames yesterday, but they're just so dead. They're so out of it. It's over for them. Bye, Sabers. Well, yeah, I mean, the the thing that we've been waiting to to do and the button that we've been waiting to press is the Sabres are officially sucked off. They've been sucked off. So, RIP to the Sabres. They've been sucked off officially. We are done. Uh, by the way, we did discuss this um, over the weekend that when we officially declare a team sucked off, we're not allowed to talk about them. Uh, on the show for the remainder of the year. So that is the last time that we will talk about the Buffalo Sabres. They're gone. They're sucked. I feel like the one uh, the one caveat to, to that should be if the coach gets fired. Because if a team gets sucked off, there's I feel like a relatively high likelihood that they make news in that. But I guess that wouldn't happen until after the season anyways, probably at this point. Well, it's a nice transition because a team that you wouldn't want to suck off this year would be the St. Louis Blues. Really, I want to start this show seriously today talking about the Capitals and the Blues. Because the Capitals... Are in it. They won. They beat the Hurricanes over the weekend, I believe. They beat the Hurricanes and Jets over the weekend. That's right, including a shutout there. They passed the Red Wings. They hold the second wild card spot in the East. I was looking at the uh, money puck thing, which is that cool chart we talked about where the, the pie piece gets smaller and larger depending on is it for them to make the playoffs? Is it for them to win a round or whatever? That thing doesn't still doesn't really think that the Capitals are going to make the playoffs. Maybe they're just behind because the Capitals are, as the kids say, a wagon. They traded off all that dead weight. They're lean. They're mean. They believe in themselves. And Buddy Pete, they are a playoff team. I guess so right now. I mean, like, I'm still not excited, excited about the Washington Capitals, although I will say Sonny Milano did make the Capitals interesting for like a few seconds over the weekend. 
they had a good weekend, but Sonny Milano scored an incredible goal where uh, he just like juggled it over the goalie's head. Sonny Milano rocks. Although I don't know if I've ever told you this, uh, I got in like a like a, a a friendly Twitter fight with Sonny Milano in the DMs like a number of years ago because he he went to bat for Bohemian Rhapsody the movie. He was like oh, that movie really? rocked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I uh, like we got in an argument about like. Dude, that movie sucks ass. Don't bring that shit in my house. <laughs> he he seems like a, a fun rapid. dude. I but bad taste. I just want to put that out there. What? So I I, I kind the of ignore lo- that. I I I know that Sean doesn't dislike. I I learned this pretty early on in our friendship, Sean. I don't know how it just came up, but you were like, "Oh, uh, you didn't like the Bohemian Rhapsody movie," and you were coming at it from a place where I was like. Sean either didn't mind Bohemian Rhapsody or he loved Bohemian Rhapsody, so we're just gonna pretend this whole thing doesn't exist. Uh, my only thing is, I just didn't. I didn't when I watched it for the first time. I didn't realize how much good music. I didn't realize how much music I knew Queen made. That's why I liked it is because it was a lot of music that I liked, not because of the actual. Movie. So you're the target demo then. <laughs> yeah, I got yeah. You're the, like pe- people it who don't know Queen. Yeah. Did you know that Freddie Mercury was gay? Yeah. Before, okay. <laughs> so I. I Honestly, I understand the criticisms of the movie. Not they, to get he gets <laughs> Pete and I have done a hundred podcasts know, about this. I know you've talked about it. in Bohemian Rhapsody. He gets AIDS from like looking at a gay guy. <laughs> yeah, they, they just like don't make him gay. They're like it's, it, the movie is like borderline ashamed of Freddie Mercury being gay. And I'm like, yo, you cannot make a Freddie Mercury movie if it is not gay as fuck, my dude. Right, yeah, and I mean, like the people that came away from Bohemian Rhapsody being like, but the music was good. So you like Queen? You don't like the the movie yeah. Bohemian Rhapsody? It, exactly. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. I enjoyed the experience because I was like, oh damn, oh oh damn, I didn't realize that was Queen. Like that was me throughout the entire movie. I watched it back a second time and it didn't do nearly as much for me. But I still was just like, after I watched it, I'm like, I'm gonna listen to Queen for the next week. What was like and, the and, biggest? Uh, I didn't know this was by Queen song for you. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I I obviously knew like Bohemian Rhapsody was Queen. I, I just I think with a lot of that rock music because i didn't grow up listening to or anything it was just all songs that i had known but if you asked me who did it like i would have i could have thrown out at one of any like 10 bands the one that even gets people who like fancy themselves queens queen fans i I feel like a lot of people don't know or can't wrap their heads around the fact that crazy little thing called love is by queen Mm, that might have been one of them it was just like one of those songs where i was just like i've heard it before but uh, hello hello i know who makes it Pete, get out yeah, here, the, 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 big, the big thing that like pissed me off was like the people saying that they liked the movie because of the music or saying that because you didn't like the movie, it means that like you're disrespecting Queen like that. Those ones bothered me t- to no end because it's like, no, I fucking love Queen, which is why I wanted them to make like an honest and interesting movie about Queen and not do like a paint by numbers biopic where you just make up a million things and twist the timeline just to make it more Hollywood. The queen is so fucking interesting that you don't have to just make shit up. Exactly. That, that was our like 10 episodes that we did about it. That's, it was like, yeah. you just do the queen story. That's completely fair. My, my whole like hot take when this movie came out was people that were getting upset over Robbie Moth not singing. And I was just like, it's fucking oh, Freddie Mercury. How the right. fuck are you going to have anyone other than Freddie Mercury? Sing that, sing that music, but Austin Butler would have done it. I guess so that's probably true. <laughs> He'd still be doing it. Who do they have traveling with Queen now? Adam Lambert. Adam, uh, Adam, right. Adam Lambert. I forget yeah. his name. Yeah. So uh, congratulations to the Capitals and the Blues. It looks like uh, they're <laughs> looking up. Uh, let's get an ad read. Just kidding. Uh, yeah, the Capitals are in the mix in the Eastern Conference, and I'm like into it now. They, they've gone really? from the get this team off my screen to. This is really funny that they got rid of good players like Mantha, fuck, uh, Kuznetsov. Like, Kuznetsov was like the big, yeah, they probably want to part with him kind of thing. Like, he wasn't fresh, even playing for them. Fresh like, start sort of yeah. situation, move the contract, whatever it would be. But whatever they did, something's gotten into those, those boys, including Alexander Ovechkin, which I like. They're going to. Get steamrolled in the first round of the playoffs, whoever they play. But I'm having a little fun with it. Yeah, it's a, who who excites you more, the Ca- the Capitals or the Blues? Like if we're talking about those two teams, the Blues because we're not totally positive we are, but like we're not totally positive at this juncture that the Golden Knights make the playoffs. 
And the Blues have Crazy. won six of seven. They're four points out of the second wild card spot. They're chasing the Golden Knights. Uh, hopefully they can play the Golden Knights soon. How about tonight, actually? There's only two games. Might bang out mm. half an early slate grade presented by a game time. There's only two games tonight, but one of them is Knights at Blues. And the Blues are hot. They're chasing the Knights. The Knights are going to make the playoffs. They're going to make the playoffs. They're probably going to win the fucking Stanley Cup. But we don't know that right now. And the Blues are making it interesting. And for a team that could have easily been sucked off, they made a coaching change. We know what happens when the Blues make a coaching change. They win the playoffs. Jordan Biddington is going to fucking go on some massive run or something. It's interesting. I like that we could talk in a second about how like the top of the NHL standings is very close. This is the time of year, though, where I want playoff picture stuff. I want teams in the hunt, in the chase, and the Blues are making it a good chase right now. Yeah, I wish that I could take the Blues and pluck them and put them in the Eastern Conference because I do feel like they're more of a deserving playoff team than the Washington Capitals. And and like when I look at St. Louis, I look at their blue line and I'm like, how are they even competitive with this blue line? But their forward group is awesome. Like Jake Neighbors has been great this year. Uh, like, you know, we talk about Robert Thomas. He's, he's awesome. Uh, they have like a, a fun forward group. And I, for as much shit as I talk about Jordan Bennington and hating Jordan Bennington, I do want Jordan Bennington in the playoffs because he does bring the chaos factor. And there's always the chance that he freaks out, poops his diaper, throws a water bottle, any of that stuff. I just want the entertainment value around Jordan Bennington. So like, I'm not, I'm not out on the blues. I'll say that. And I do, I'm still rooting for Detroit to overtake Washington. Cause I, I there's more juice to be had from the from the Red Wings than the Capitals in my mind. Yeah, I think that if we're doing a quick power ranking of interesting fringe playoff teams, obviously the Golden Knights has to be number one because they're the defending Stanley Cup champion. And once they get to the playoffs, they're going to have all these healthy guys. But I'm with you on like the Blues being behind them. The Red Wings in Capitals, Red Wings I don't see making any sort of run. I don't I mean I really don't see any of these teams making any sort of run other than the the Golden Knights. Like is there a playoff team that you know, Lightning doesn't really count because they're pretty far yeah. ahead. Like they've sewn up. They should have the first spot sewn up uh among the wild card teams unless they catch the Maple Leafs, but I think it's more likely the Maple Leafs catch the Bruins at this point than <laughs> the Lightning catch the Maple Leafs. Look at the top of the East right there. You got Rangers leading the way. Florida and Boston, 97 points apiece, but Florida has a game in hand. And then there's that wild card situation. Tampa, 85 points. Washington, 79 points. But right behind Washington is Detroit with 78 points. I got to say, I think Washington actually is going to get in. I think they will over Detroit. They have a, uh, when I look at the tankathon, like strength of schedule, they have a, they have an easier schedule than Detroit by like, a, by a tiny bit. They have the 10th hardest strength of schedule remaining with 12 games and Detroit has the eighth hardest with 11 games remaining. So like it's, it's pretty, pretty minimal. But I think when you look at like the league as a whole right now, this for, for like a playoff picture that has been more or less locked with the exception of maybe like two, three teams for a while, like the playoff picture right now is super interesting just because the top seven teams at the top of the overall standings are separated by one point. So if you're talking about the president's trophy, good fucking luck trying to guess who that ends up in the hands of at the end of the year because things are so tight at the top and you've got some pretty interesting races uh in the wild card at at the bottom quote unquote the bottom right now so really interesting time to be a hockey fan for the next couple of weeks i think that of all these teams I, i'd like the rangers to to get it really they a, they, i mean i don't like the rangers but <laughs> they're so think, streaky I don't want the Canucks to get it. Florida, Florida, or the Rangers. I would be wait. Why the Canucks? With. Why not? They've been like I, first hanging around there the entire season. I think that would be like a worthy Presidents Trophy. And you know what? Actually, yeah, I'll give you Canucks because Canucks, or I'm sorry, Presidents Trophy has some like Coach of the Year energy to it, where a lot of the time yeah. the team that wins it is 
a borderline surprisey type team, and then you end up overrating them, and then they end up crashing and burning. Like we've like every, every time we've talked about the Canucks, we've talked about them as like the inevitable team that gets their asses kicked in the playoffs after hanging at the top of the standings every year, just because they're a pretty green team in terms of playoff experience. So that would line up perfectly as them winning the president's trophy and getting immediately smacked around. Well, uh, I thought that maybe the Oilers might catch the Canucks at some point. Uh, this will transition us into some Monday asshole watch because both the Oilers and Bruins, who we think have continued to to play these Stanley Cup final matchups, I, that's some Celebrini Bowl games in hindsight because both these teams, huge asshole watch. Oilers get bullied by the Leafs Saturday, blow a 3-1 lead to the Senators on Sunday. They're 10 points behind the Canucks, at, and they've got two games in hand. Uh, they play the Kings Thursday. Oilers three points ahead of the Kings and the Oilers have a game in hand on Sunday. I feel like no one's talking about this on Sunday. Uh, Evander Kane got scratched for what Chris Knobloch called uh, maintenance. You see on Saturday, Leon Dreisaitl was yelling at him on the bench. No. Yeah. So my antennas go up there. I don't want to say that everything's falling apart in Edmonton. We'll talk in a few minutes about why some great things are happening in Edmonton, but really, really rough weekend for the the Oilers. I was away watching college basketball all weekend, but I still watched that whole Leafs game on Saturday. And let me tell you what, if that was a playoff atmosphere, the Leafs were playing like a playoff team because they were physical. They were really out muscling the Oilers. Evan Bouchard had a freaking brutal night and we know what the positive is with him he's an electric offensive defenseman but boy oh boy oh boy does he shy away from contact which isn't what you totally want in a defenseman at least you're gonna need to have like a better stick or something he sucked on Saturday and then Sunday they're up 3-1 on the Senators and blow it zero points out of this weekend yuck do you have you seen anything from like Edmonton obviously you're you're an Edmonton bobo plugged in some might say different word um would you would you consider like what you've seen from the Oilers of late like a problem heading into the playoffs or are they just getting it out of their system right now may not be no, a bad thing no I, I think they're dicking around but I'll tell you this Adam Henrique looks good with them like wh- whoever he's played with he's starting to produce a little bit so I like that gives you versatility up front in that lineup I think that they're trying to figure out what what role Evander Kane should play with them. Because if he's just like a third liner, not playing with great line mates, we know Sean, what he's going to do. He's going to say, go bye-bye and just be boring. Right. I'm not going to lie. I was very distracted because I was, as I normally do, I was scrolling through Twitter to just make sure no, nothing pops up. And I came across a video of Gene holding a hot dog and then immediately dropping said hot dog. Uh, So that kind of, took over all so, my attention. I'll tell you what, I know what video you're talking about. <laughs> I've seen it before. Someone I someone posted it last night. I bet this is the way you're seeing it where <laughs> the Oilers this weekend. Hello yep, everybody. Oh, yep, yep, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> and I just got very distracted by the video of Gene. Dude, have you seen this video? I haven't. No. It is not scripted. Gene sincerely does not mean to drop the hot dog. It can't be as good as uh, our our pal um Handsome Hank. Henry Lockwood from Barstool. You ever, remember when he did the game? The, I think it was the game time read. And he was doing, he had the sausage at TD Garden. And he was like doing his read and the sausage just slides out of the bun and falls. Oh, no. The read. It is one of the funniest videos a, that I've ever seen. It's incredible. Uh, no, but I do think you're right, though, that like the Oilers, like this is dicking around season for the Oilers. And it has been for a little bit. Like they've been winning some games despite dicking around. But like I think Knobloch is is playing around with the lineup and seeing what what spark might catch, and unfortunately, doesn't seem like there's been many sparks recently. Were yeah, we talking seeing... about Evander Kane potentially being a locker room cancer? Was that the? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm I'm saying like they're figuring out where they can get away with putting him. Like, does it have to be next to McDavid? And if not. What does he do? Does he go in a hole? And the chat is angrily, perhaps. Maybe we got some Sabres fans in there, or Sharks fans, or at any place. Or neutral that, fans. Any any neutral place fans that Evander Kane is saying, like, you know what? You're a little old for this. 
Mm. You're well compensated. You should be like, you're a good enough player that you should be able to drive a line. Yes, that's all true. He is old enough. He should be able to, he doesn't. Yeah. Okay. So like the Oilers knew this when they extended him where there's a reason you get him at on a nice little bargain or whatever, but God, if he could be like a bottom six driving factor, it would go such a long way because then you can move Nugent Hopkins and Henrique and even dry saddle around as much as you want. Evander Kane, please just be nice. And maybe I'm maybe I'm he taking does. a leap when I say I see Leon Drysaddle yelling at him on the bench Saturday and then he doesn't play for maintenance Sunday. But with Evander Kane, would that really surprise you? Well, hurt feelings? Does that count as maintenance? Yeah. You yeah. Think, well, are you saying that like he has hurt feelings or Leon Drysaddle is like there's no way this fucking guy plays next game? I, my guess was going to be the latter. Yeah, I would I would guess that that would happen before the other one. But I mean, like you're ta you're talking about like Evan Bouchard not being a physical player. Like the big knock against the Oilers for a long time has been, yeah, sure they play with a lot of speed, they play a ton of skill, not a physical team. That's that's kind of what's uh, hampered them in the playoffs in the past. Like they they need Evander Kane. They need Evander Kane to be Evander Kane, and they need him in the lineup, and they need him to be effective if they're going to make a deep run. As, as much as you want to say like Evander Kane is just kind of like a piece for the Oilers, he is an important piece. All right. Well, on the other side of the ad read, we are going to talk some Oilers positivity. But first, we got to talk about the Bruins also being on asshole watch. Two straight losses. Their next five games are on the road against playoff teams at Florida, at Tampa, at Washington, at Nashville, at Carolina. Oy, 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 oy. Yeah. Uh, hardest remaining schedule in the league um, by... Pretty decent margin. Uh, two remaining games, Florida. Two remaining games, Carolina, Nashville, Tampa. It's Their remaining schedule is so challenging that on the easiest opponents list, the Washington Capitals are listed twice. And the Washington Capitals are currently a playoff team. So, uh, and like, if you want to talk about the Bruins being on asshole watch, the news came out this morning, a video from practice. Jim Montgomery made them do sprints. That's what uh, I said, say. Wake the fuck up and made them do sprints. So yeah, yeah, big time asshole watch, I think, for the Boston Bruins right now. Hooting and hollering. Well, I mean, I, I mentioned like the you get overrated kind of thing. Uh, like if you surprise people, Jim Montgomery maybe turned some heads, slotted in and was better last year than people expected. I saw this from Steve Conroy, I want to say. Like Jim Montgomery might be doing a better job this year that he has them in a playoff position and like a president's trophy race position versus last year where he's got Dmitry Orlov and Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci and Tyler Bertuzzi and Garnett Hathaway. I mean, he had Garnett Hathaway on the squad last year. Loaded. <laughs> why, did, why did you start with Dmitry Orlov? <laughs> I was like, like, I'm not going to start with Patrice like Bergeron. The most stacked roster last year. And your starting point was Dmitry Orlov. How's Dmitry Orlov's team doing this year? President's Trophy race. Suck it, Pete. I mean, he's a good player, but I don't know if I'd start with him. But, I mean, there is a case to be made. It sounds ridiculous on the surface that when you coached the best team in the history of the NHL's regular season to be like the following year, you did a better job. But, like, when you consider the roster, I think that's probably true. Yeah. Uh, can they fuck themselves on the stretch, though? That's my can they fuck themselves. Like I don't think like, so. Like I don't think the Bruins really can fuck themselves down this. Yeah. Like all, all they can do is not win the President's Trophy when we thought maybe they'd be in the mix. Like even if the Leafs catch them, then cool. they're not going to catch them. They're eight points back. Like they have two games in hand, but they're eight points. Like to close eight points in the final yeah. ten to twelve games of the season seem like the Bruins would have to lose out. I think. But it's, and, I mean, it's it's really let's say. Let's, but even, let's say it's really like five points. Sure, but like even still, worst case scenario for the Bruins. I just did Trump hands, by the way. I'm sorry. Um, it's worst case scenario. <laughs> uh, worst case scenario for the Bruins at this point in time is that they get the Toronto Maple Leafs in the first round. That's so. That's what I was going to say. Like even if the Leafs catch them, sweet, we'll have to knock you out playing the first two games at, <laughs> in your place. Right. Yeah. yeah, right. So, so uh, the Bruins are kind of in an unfuckable spot right now. And I just I just think that that's like that doesn't make them a good team. It doesn't mean that they're going to be totally fine. I just think that at this point, they don't have a ton to lose. 
10 games remaining for the Bruins. A lot of games. A lot of games remaining. And uh, we're going to go to all of them, thanks to Game Time. You ever use Game Time? You just jump on that app, that website. You say, hey, here's how many tickets I want to this game, this date, this time. If your preferences align with when that game is being played, you just hop in. I'll tell you what. I was forced to use a competitor's website or app over the weekend. Fucking horrible experience. Why horrible. Were, why were you forced to use a competitor? Because I had tickets transferred to me through uh, a different app. Ugh. And like I, I didn't I didn't purchase the tickets on those app. They were just transferred to me and absolutely horrendous experience. And That's... if I missed the first five to seven minutes of the hockey's final because an app decided to not work. So I've never had a problem with game time, incredible user and uh, user experience, user interface, big time recommend on game time would not recommend some of the competitors. The chat says, uh, Jim Mont game time. Exactly. Exactly. That's some, some, uh, ticket app of the year. My favorite thing about game time is the all in pricing button. Mm, I press yeah. that. And I get to turn my brain off and I just click, click, click. These are the ones I want. Get them in. No surprises. It is so clean. It is so easy. And as I've described, there have been times I've used game time and just for the heck of it, been like, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to use these other things, but I'm going to shop around just to prove to myself that I'm using the best service. And each and every time, wouldn't you know it, with that all in pricing button selected, I win with game time because they end up giving you the better deal. It's not the, oh, well, this one's listed as a little lower. So now I'm going to check out and be stunned by how much I have to overpay. Well, I mean, I would suggest always shopping around because I don't know if you're familiar with the game time is like a price matching thing oh. where if you find if you find I'll read it directly so I don't mess this up. Um, if you find a lower price anywhere, they'll add a hundred ten percent difference of the price to your account. So if you find a cheaper ticket somewhere, you let game time know. They're gonna they're gonna give you that and some. They're gonna give yeah, you they're not only price matching. They're like they're the tip, ticket app that gives you money. They tip you. They give you cash <laughs> or credits. They give you cash. We were asked for cash, by the way, <laughs> at Hockey East. Oh yeah, I gave away a couple dollar bills at uh at the Hockey East uh, semifinals. Did they subscribe? They did. Yeah, our subscribers. So, I, I think that there's like a there's got to be a statute of limitations on this offer to give give away one dollar bills to subscribers but uh i was in a good mood on friday night so made it happen it was for that one night only and then Correct. uh it also we also noted that future exclusions could apply we could just decide in the moment uh this is an exclusion i'm not giving you one dollar so head to game time open up that app Create an account. Use code CHAOS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CHAOS for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. Also, uh, let's do a like spike here, huh? We, uh, we got a bunch of people in the chat. So if you're here, please hit that thumbs up button right below the video player. Hit that like button. Not sure how it helps us, but it does. And if you're not subscribed, would love you to do that as well we are approaching 5k we're at uh like i think like 70 ish away so please subscribe much appreciated uh also have to talk about my friends at pxg because uh pxg is an incredible golf company and a couple weeks ago i went out to their framingham location and tried out their black ops driver it's a new driver on the market i brought my driver to uh to like that like a little simulator that they have inside there they told me what was wrong with my driver they told me what was wrong with my swing they tried to uh they did their best to fix it and i'm very excited to uh to use the black ops driver this summer when i hit the course they uh they hooked it up so i'm i'm, I'm extremely excited the the staff over there was extremely helpful my guy brandon uh, help me with my swing and uh, PXG, an incredible company. So if you want to do the Black Ops, Ops Driver Challenge, bring your current driver to a PXG location. They will do the same thing with you that they did with me, free of charge. And then uh, you can see if the, the PXG Black Ops Driver is right for you. It's a breakthrough in dr driver technology. It's a complete and total victory in the golf club engineering. Unlike anything you've ever seen before, it's adjustable to deliver a combined MOI of 10,000 plus for Unreal Forgiveness. 
Like if you need forgiveness, like I need forgiveness on the golf course, PXG has got you covered. So uh, Game Changer has been thrown around so much, it's kind of lost its meaning. But trust me when I tell you that the PXG driver is a true Game Changer. You'll be as impressed with it as I am. Uh, learn more and get free shipping on all equipment at pxg.com slash whatchaos. That's pxg.com slash whatchaos for free shipping on all equipment, pxg.com slash what chaos i don't think i'm telling tales out of school but uh people have said from time to time that you look like matt damon right true so when you strolled in there with that golf club of yours that small golf club did they say whoa a late 90s power couple is here because i think that that's matt damon and a mini driver <laughs> remember when they dated right. remember Jeez. when they remember when what those two pull. dated mini what driver that small golf club of yours. I feel like very rarely when jokes take that much work do they land, but I fucking loved that. That was oh, a no, pretty, that was that was a pretty good one. I didn't know where you were going. <laughs> That's from I, the, thought you uh, were just gonna, I thought you were going into like the, hey, did you get the celebrity treatment you, when you walked into the PXG? And I like, That's what I, I, thought I literally did. I, I walked into PXG and they were like, they rolled out the red carpet. They gave me a complimentary water. They, uh, they, they really hooked it up. I felt like a celebrity there. So didn't go that direction but your joke was <laughs> absolutely landed <laughs> thank you very much it also uh, just immediately got a text from uh one of our friends mike from uber and says does pxg do irons they do they do so they don't do just drivers they do irons wow well i, I mean if it, it, it it's jeremy irons i don't know uh <laughs> we've got should have quit while you're ahead pal. we're no, I'll get back there. We have reached 50 goal season where everybody who's going to score 50 goals scores 50 goals now. Austin Matthews already did a little while ago, but Zach Hyman hits 50 goals. Sam Reinhart hits 50 goals. Which of the two do you think we're going to discuss right now? <laughs> I have a guess. It's Zach Hyman. And oh, <laughs> look at this moment after. I, I don't know if anybody saw it. So Zach Hyman scores two goals over the weekend. He could have done it. Uh, he could have gotten to 50 on Saturday against the Leafs. Wasn't able to do it. Got to 49. Scores 50 or scores his 50th on Sunday against the Senators. In what was, by the way, like I love that the Oilers power play has just turned into we will use the first power play to have Leon Dreisaitl hammer shots from the bottom of the circle you he'll probably score you'll lose your fucking mind and then the next power play we'll just pass it to zach hyman in front of the net and he'll tap it home very easily it's the best uh, an incredible primary assist on that uh hyman goal by the way from connor mcdavid like a nice little one touch assist right to the doorstep beautiful stuff uh, i'm so happy for zach hyman it's the, the discourse around like, oh, Jack Hyman's not like a real, he's a tap-in merchant. I don't give a fuck. Shut up. It, Zach Hyman is an incredible dude. Never heard a bad word about him. Like you could see from the reactions from his teammates who's scoring. We even talked to like Zach Wierenski from his time at Michigan talking about Zach Hyman was one of the best guys. It, and they all count the same. Who gives a shit? I love uh, I love Zach Hyman getting all of his goals from the doorstep just as much as I love Alexander Ovechkin getting all of his goals from the circle. Do not talk to me about where they come from. I love that certain players have like a style and an office. And if his office is right next to the net, right by the crease, right in the asshole, beautiful. Give it to me. Give, him, give me all the goals from right there. I don't give a shit. Oh, I tip my cap. That was wonderful, Peter. That was art. I love it. I hope to make several reels out of it. Maybe even play some like motivational music behind it. It'll be incredible. <laughs> because you know I love a guy just stands on the asshole and taps it in. A JVR, a Zach Hyman. The thing with all the... And the, yesterday, man, people were having a field day. You are right. People were having a field day with like, oh, the fake goal scorer scored his 50th fake goal. Cool. Good for him. There was one tweet that did make me laugh. It was... Uh, I saw my girlfriend crying today. I said, what's wrong? And she said, I am uh, I am a Zach Hyman goal that is like an actual hockey goal. It was in that moment I knew she was not real. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I feel like it's also ridiculous because it'd be one thing if like it was easy to get to the front of the net, but you get to the front of the net and you're getting your ass kicked right. all the time. 
So like, it's not like they're it's not like they're free goals. They're I would argue they're they're like harder goals to score than most goals because other goals like if you're Austin Matthews, you're just skillful and you're good at hockey. It doesn't matter how good at hockey. I mean, obviously it matters, but like you're getting your ass kicked to get to the front of the net. Yeah, and the, the thing that I wanted to ask Hyman if we got him this year, which was never going to happen, the Oilers will not give us Zach Hyman. We've been trying to bang down that door all season. No it's just anybody. Not, it, yeah, it's just not happening. But what I wanted to throw out there to him is like there is the whole like, oh, anyone can score 20 goals with McDavid. Anyone can score 25 goals with McDavid. Well, like who can score 50 goals with McDavid? What does that mean then? If anybody can score X amount and you score double that amount, it means you're really good. And a lot of it is Leafs fans who are crying and upset. He never scored more than 21 goals with them. They couldn't sign him. We've talked about this. Like he had to be the guy that they let go, but he just busts his ass. And if you saw it yesterday, I can't remember if I sent it to the group, but I for sure tweeted it. Gene with him after he scored his 50th, they, those two have a great rapport because everyone has a great rapport with Gene. And as you said, Zach Hyman seems like the yeah, sweetest Zach guy Hyman, in the world. Yeah. But he talked about just like not being the best and working hard. And it was such a J.K. Simmons call your mom Oscar speech for me. It was like, you know what? Everything I suspected about you being the sweetest is now confirmed. So I'm so happy for him. I'm so happy that when he scored that goal, Leon Dreisaitl, who... If Zach Hyman weren't on the team, Drysaddle would probably have like 25 more goals. Goes over to him and gives him the biggest hug. You could tell everyone loves him on that team. You could tell that he loves being an Oiler. He's found his role. He's found his calling. And he's the fucking best. So in a horrible Oilers weekend, this was a beautiful moment. He is now the first Jewish player to score 50 goals. I was, uh, as I told you, I was away this weekend with some buddies. One of them. My friend Scott Hyman, who is a uh, devout Jewish person, loves his family, loves his religion, loves being Jewish and all that, isn't the biggest hockey fan, but he was like, hey, uh, I, I looked into your, to, to, to your boy, uh, Zach Hyman, like he, he, he does, he like walks the walk, Jewish walk, yeah. promotes yeah. Like is like a great ambassador for like Jewish athletes and everything. I'm still looking for somebody who doesn't like Zach Hyman. Love him. No, I can't find a single person who has a bad thing to say about Zach Hyman who isn't a Maple Leafs fan who's deranged on Twitter. Um, <laughs> also, like we haven't talked about the the quote from Sheldon Keefe about I call him uh, I call him Shaq Hyman the, the way that he dominates the paint like incredible quote an incredible nickname i don't know if i'm ever going to refer to him from this point on as anything other than shaq hyman shaq i think that we need to start getting basketball jerseys maybe sean has a hookup on cheap basketball jerseys we get basketball jerseys that are shaquille o'neal jerseys and it just says his uh, hyman on the back so like a lakers <laughs> what did he wear there 36 yeah, no. Sean just bought, oh, no, no. Sean just 30... bought a Marcus Smart jersey, number 36. Peel off that nameplate, brother, and put a hyman on the back of it. He wore that 36 would be for Boston. Incredible. It, it is a Fanatics jersey, so it probably won't be very hard to peel off the name. So, That's yeah. true. So he would have been, th what, 32 in Orlando, 32 in L.A.? 34. 34. 32 in Orlando, 34 in L.A. Okay. And I forget what he was. He, he chose it uh, because of David Ortiz. He was 32 in Orlando, 34 in LA, 32 in Miami, uh, 32 in Phoenix, 33 in Cleveland, and 36 here. I'll tell you what. Awesome. Like, a Zach Hyman heat jersey, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't say this to take anything away from Zach Hyman or Sam Reinhart, but like 50 goals in the NHL is not what it used to be. <laughs> like look at the goal total it's still it's still awesome like it's still a crazy accomplishment especially if you're sam reinhardt and into unrestricted free agency my boy about to be rich rich um but like i tweeted about this last week like it was in our lifetime not long ago like th even like four years ago if you had 40 goals you were basically a god in the nhl and you look at the goal totals this year there is conceivably 15 guys that could hit 40 goals this year, which is crazy to think about. 
you were talking about Matthews maybe hitting 70. We've got Hyman hitting 50. We've got Reinhardt hitting 50. And like, it's good for the league, I think. But it's just like, you know, saying Zach Hyman is a 50 goal scorer isn't quite what it was like four years ago. Yeah, that's, and that's I, the only point that I want to make. I saw something, I forget who put it out there, but like this is currently a run of three years in a row that there's been three 50 goal scorers. And that wasn't happening all through like the early 2000s or anything. I think the last time it happened was in the mid to late 90s, which sounds right. Like I remember, I don't know, probably 2013, 14, 15-ish, where like you weren't too removed from like every team not having a 30 goal scorer. Yeah. And people keep bringing up the, the Jamie Ben, uh, um, Art Ross year in which he won with 87 points. Like that oh was God. 2015. Wild. 2015. Well, Jamie Ben won with 87 points on Sam Reinhart. This is an all time contract year. He's 28 turns 29 in November. He's coming off. I do need to note on him that like he is coming off back to back 30 goal years. So he has been awesome for a little bit. And now he's incredible. And it's the time that you want to do it because you're about to hit unrestricted free agency. But I feel like early on, there was some like borderline Brady Anderson talk with him of, and I'm dating myself now, but like the, whoa, where'd this guy come from? He's suddenly scoring a million goals. He was already scoring like 500,000 goals. Yeah, and there was like a lot of um a lot of like you know, he's a Barkov merchant talk, but like he's been doing it without Barkov. Like he's 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 just a good player in his own right. And you know, it's kind of the same discussion with Hyman and in like McDavid and being a merch like it doesn't matter. Like you're producing and you're a great player. Like you have to be a really good player to put up that many goals and put up that many points. So like obviously it helps to play with all world talent, but you know, it, it's you, you can't like take away respect from those guys from producing alongside those other guys. Is he getting eleven so, million plus a year? Uh I probably wouldn't give it to him. I'll be honest. Um, but if he gets it, I'll be happy for him. It's the old uh, PK Subban was always that guy for me. I was like, God, I want that player. Don't want to pay. They're not paying what he's going right. to cost. But God, I want that player. Yeah, if, if if you want to pay it better you than me, but uh, love the player, not necessarily going to love the price tag that comes along with an incredible year uh, in this final year. And also you have to have like the discussion of like how much of it, how much of this is a product of him wanting wanting that money and and heading into unrestricted free agency. Like we talked to Marshan at the beginning of the year and he said there in his contract years. He just fucking locks in. He knows it's important to him. And I like you look at the contract years that a lot of guys have, and I'm sure that 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 happens. Like you are, you are kind of solidifying your future. And I'm sure there's a little bit more focus and a little bit more dedication to the game that comes in the final year of your deal. We talked uh, before that true hating son of a gun signed a, a stupid contract with the Leafs, but we talked about could the Blackhawks throw massive money at William Nylander for like two years before they have to pay Connor Bedard. That's not happening now. Right. Would Sam Reinhart entertain a short, huge fucking contract or at 28, you're turning 29 in the fall. Are you like, N you know what? I'd rather cash in for like $9 million a year times seven. I would take, I would take the term. Yeah, I would take the term for sure, especially like it, I and and like if you're the Blackhawks, why not? Like you, you you're gonna put him next to Connor Bedard for her for a long time. It's a it's a pretty good pretty good tandem, pretty good duo. I I wouldn't be I wouldn't kick that out of bed. So like you, that's something that I'd keep an eye on. You boys ready to play a little game? Yeah, it's not oh, a yeah. game really. It's just an exercise, I suppose. But. We always talk about, man, how great is it that the Zach Hyman contract worked out so well? What a free agency signing, blah, blah. Saw more and more and more of that. I saw Pierre Lebrun, various people saying, like, this is the best Oilers signing ever. This should go down as one of the best free agent signings ever. I'm going to give you, and I did some research on this, the five 
best free agent signings of the salary cap era, which okay. salary cap era for younger listeners and viewers. There was a lockout in 0405. Jeremy Jacobs, who doesn't like spending money, was like, yo, there's got to be a salary cap. And then I'm going to spend to that and it'll look like I spend money. So now there's a salary cap. Uh, number five, before I get into this. So this is inspired by Zach Hyman. We're going to do the greatest free agent signings of the salary cap era. These are not like undrafted free agents or stealth one-year deals that ended up becoming good guys. I'm talking about July 1, big ticket, throw your checkbook on the table and give a player a blank check. Huge signings that actually ended up working out for teams because as I was doing the research on this, it's pretty tough to find five even that were like amazing. But I think that I have five here. Do you have any thoughts going in? Are there any names in your mind? Um... Yeah, so like uh, like Artemi Panarin was a pretty good uh, July first, I want to say, Pr- pretty good one. And Zach Hyman would jump off uh, as as being one of those guys as well. Um, an interesting one is uh, is Sergey Bobrovsky because everybody mocked the Sergey Bobrovsky contract for years, and he was bad for a long time. But like at this point, Sergey Bobrovsky has done enough with the Florida Panthers where I would say, you know, if he wins a cup, that is like a a good signing. Even if he gets them to another cup, like this year, if they make the Stanley Cup finals again this year, back-to-back years, on the strength of like Sergey Bobrovsky being pretty good in net, I think that's a, as a good signing. Okay, this is also, as I look at the names, I'm like, this is like the most DJ list in the world. It's like only players that I like. Uh, but number five is a name that you have already said, Artemi Panarin. Mm -hmm. He is having his fourth 90-point season in five years with the Rangers. Been a a point-of-game player in all of them. He's got two years after this on a seven-year... I'll give the contracts on these, by the way. Artemi Panarin, seven years, $11.64 million AAV. Signed it in 2019. This was a deal, kind of like another person on this list, where... It helped put them back on track to being like, okay, right. this is going to be a central piece of our future. And with the like Parise and Suter contracts, that's what Minnesota was trying to do. They were like, we are going to get these free agents, and now we're just off. This is what our this is what the, the face of our team is, and now we're okay. It didn't work out amazingly. But I think in the case of the Rangers, and they threw out huge money for them. Again, eleven point six five million dollars in 2019, nothing to sneeze at. It's worked. Yeah, and the Rangers are one of those teams that that can actually do damage in free agency. And like with um, you know, we talked about like the the guys who refuse to sign their entry level contracts with the team that draft them, and then they kind of like flex their way to get to New York because it's a desirable market. Like the Rangers have a better chance of winning in free agency. Because they don't necessarily have to like pay through the ass because people do want to play for the Rangers. People do want to play at MSG. People do want to play in New York and be in that market. So you have like, it's kind of like the big swinging dick that they can bring to the free agent market. And they did it with Artemi Panarin. And they can kind of like fast track their rebuild. Number four, signed in 2020. There's a lot of active players on this list. Number four, signed in 2020. To a seven-year contract with an $8.8 million AAV by the Vegas Golden Knights, Alex Petrangelo, I am saying is the fourth best free agent signing of the salary cap era. He's got three more years after this, and he's got a full no move throughout or whatever, but he goes there. He is one of the, like, how did a team let this go type of players where stud first pairing defenseman plays a million minutes for you and wins you a Stanley Cup with Stanley Cup pedigree already at the time. Yeah, like fresh off Stanley Cup pedigree. Uh, I would even go as far to say that like somehow Alex Petrangelo is an underrated defenseman in the NHL. Like I don't think that he often enters into like the who is the best defenseman in the NHL discussion. He's got to be up there. He's so good and so sound. Horse, That's a great, great call. Horse, dog, sound, yeah. whatever. Now, here's where we're really getting into DJ territory. 
Number three, signed in 2009 to a 12-year contract with a $5.27 million AAV by the Chicago Blackhawks, Marion Hosa. Oh, my God. So he'd played in Ottawa forever, played in Atlanta, gets traded to uh, Pittsburgh, loses the cup final, goes right. to Detroit, loses the cup final. Fuck. Signs this huge deal, very long, low AAV. This is back before the Mark Savard rule existed, where you kind of do that back dive in contract. Goes to Chicago, immediately wins a cup, one of three, is part of a core, and no... He's not the Taves and he's not the Kane there. Those were the two primary pieces. But, man, and he's also, I guess, not like the Keith, but like Seabrook level type of impact. Great player for them. Just an absolute stud. Chicago legend. God, planet player. If, love if him. that's your number three, I'm excited to see who two and one are because that's a gr great contract. Do you not know who, do, do you not have guesses to, as the two and one? I'm going to guess Zach Hyman is in there. Uh, I don't know who uh, who two would be, or I guess the other one would be. As soon as I start to say the words, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Number two, Zach Hyman. 2021 okay. signs a seven-year deal with a $5.5 million AAV. We've talked a million times about how he's such a great example of a team going out, extending themselves for a player, projecting that they can be better with them paying a lot of money and it just working out 21 not a lot goals of money, though. what's that it's really not it's not a lot of money immediately I mean, the like contract it, was a, it was a big deal but like not a lot of money <laughs> and he had a, a career high of 21 goals when he joined the oilers immediately gets 27 goals his first year then 36 last year 50 this year what a signing number one do we have any guesses as to what number one could be Whatever, I'm just going to say it. Signed to a five-year contract with a $7.5 million AAV in 2006. Over 17% of the salary cap. Talk about throwing out so much money to say, just get us this player in 2006 by the Boston Bruins, Zdeno Chara, the best free agent signing of the cap era. One of the best free agent signings in the history of sports. He is the best example I can think of in hockey of just get this guy here. Everything will change. He goes there. Everything did change. Oh, yo, yo. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a I mean that you I am feel stupid for not thinking about that. But yeah, that's 100 percent. Number one by far far because you're, you're not only talking about like you get one of the better defensemen in NHL history but I think that when you talk about like the Bruins culture and how much is said about that right now and how sustainable it's been the like day one of that was signing to Zdeno Chara and having him change the culture of the Bruins and part of it was also on the same day signing Mark Savard to a to a big contract but man it's in doing the research for this it's the 17.05% of the cap that gets me. That is so much. To, like, that is Crosby, Ovechkin type contract territory. We're just like, you know what? We'll figure out the rest of our roster later. We just need to make sure that we have this guy. What a signing. Yeah, yeah. it was smart. In all, <laughs> like, it, in all of his future smart. deals, like the cap would go up and Char would sign for less. He also, I, I believe, had more money on the table from the Rangers and the Kings. But a big part, I think, was Boston was going to make him captain, and captain, he liked yeah. Peter Shirelli and all that. So fun little exercise. and tells you, because this is all factual, it's objective. No. Yes, it's objective. This is all correct. Zach Hyman is currently the best active free agent signing. Pretty impressive. Shout out Oilers. Good that. job there. Um, do we want to go around and uh, check in on some of our guys? Because uh, our guys had some uh, interesting weekends. Yeah, let's do it quick because I got to get out of here at the top of the hour. or like Okay, after let's the top do it. Hour, uh, but... All right, uh, Sean, can you just throw up the quick little thing of the three? Uh, th you guys, Seth Jarvis was pounding a Red Bull on uh, <laughs> during the game. He first told us that he was a Red Bull guy, doesn't like coffee. See Frank Vetrano there repping uh, the PWHL. What a guy. 
Boston Mr. in particular. Yep, Boston. And yeah, then Boston. Uh, our insider, Johnny Lazarus, uh, tweeted a picture of uh, some ice cream dish. He appeared to me. I don't, I'm not positive what that is. Uh, and he tweeted the word redemption, and everybody was mean to him. Uh, here are some replies <laughs> to Johnny Lazarus's picture of his chicken parm. Of course, you got some what nuts in there because there's a lot of barking. You got the lady in the tramp eating the pasta. Somebody said, uh, bro put marshmallow fluff on his chicken. That is what it looks like. <laughs> Somebody said, this looks like one of those desserts people makes to look like dinner. LOL. Someone said, I see a knife. Didn't realize you could get one in prison. Somebody said, this does not mama the Mia. I'll tell you what. I said, th- I love this. I was trying to just support no, my guy. Up. I said, this all shut looks up. good. And then, uh, then you also had, this was only one of many people, a lot of people were like threatening to kill him. Mm-hmm. They said the only yeah, justifiable fair. punishment for ingesting whatever that is. And it's Johnny as Tommy in Goodfellas about to get whacked. So people were saying that, that Johnny Lazarus should die. I, I don't, wasn't my course of action, but, uh, that was a common read on, on this, Peter. I had a double. Re- I had a double response to it. I, I couldn't decide whether I. I said I, with the reply, I said if anti-Italian discrimination was a meal, and then I also said if my grandmother ever laid eyes on this, she would beat you to death with her vacuum cleaner. Like as an Italian, that is the second worst pasta dish I think I've ever seen in my life, and the first one was Buddy the Elf just putting like syrup and candy all over his spaghetti. That is. The lack of sauce and is just upsetting. That is an affront to Italian culture. The cheese is my problem. That is so much cheese, and it isn't even thinking about being burnt. Like how? <laughs> it's it, not even thinking about being cooked. Never mind yeah, it's burnt. Like warm cheese. The cheese it's doesn't like, bother me. It at looks all. like mayo. I, I, the cheese doesn't bother me. Just the lack of sauce on the pasta. The, the lack of sauce. The wet noodles the, is what's really upsetting me. Right, like the lack of sauce, the the cheese, all of it, all of it is so bad, and it looks like he's eating at a restaurant. Like, yeah, right. So the, the wine glass throws me for a loop. Underrated Table? part of this, it, it, the empty spot on the plate that should be like right. some broccoli or something, where he's just like ah, bad veggies, bad presentation, bad plating, everything is terrible about this. Johnny is just needs to stop eating food, apparently. No, I like it. I, I really like that we've... I don't know if Johnny knows that he's in our world, but uh, I like that oh, we've made him, him all the time. What's that? He knows that he's in our world. He yeah. knows that he's in our world. I text him about it. He's all for it. So, like, I, I don't... Especially, like, I don't want to be mean to somebody, but Johnny is okay with us being mean to him. The, well, that's my insider. So, you, you all watch what you say about him. But, <laughs> boy, oh, boy, not the best weekend for him. I will say, I mean, that, that Frank Vetrano pick is uh, very nice. Let's do a slate grade presented by Game Time. Before we do that, can I talk about the uh, the Chaos Chain? Because we have oh. a big Chaos Chain update. Uh, the Chaos Chain still being held by the Colorado Avalanche, who are on an absolute heater. They beat the Blue Jackets and the Penguins over the weekend, which means that you, DJ, have acquired both the Blue Jackets and the Penguins. And in the latter case, it is the first time that a team has been stolen. You took oh. the Penguins from Sean. Uh, so now you have a bunch of teams and with one more win from the Colorado avalanche, they can move into a tie for first place on the chaos chain leaderboard with five <laughs> wins holding the chain. Uh, their next game is tomorrow night against the lowly Montreal Canadians. So it's a very winnable game and it has implications because I hold the Canadians. So a lot of things getting spicy with the chaos chain these days. Oh, this is. I don't even know what to do with myself. It's so it's it's crazy. I don't know what it all means, but it me it's there's a lot happening. We're gonna find out. Let's do a g- good good work by Pete Yeoman's work. Let's do a slate grade presented by Game Time. There are only two games tonight, and I'll tell you what, they're really good. 8 p.m. U.S. Golden Knights at Blues. Major Western Conference wild card implications there. Can't wait to watch it. 9 p.m. Kings at Canucks. Major. Those are two good Pacific teams, and I like to watch them. Implications there. Kings aren't going to catch the Canucks. I don't know. The way the Oilers are dicking around, the Kings might catch the Oilers. Who knows? 
But we're talking about President's Trophy race, and the Canucks are at the top of the President's Trophy race. So every every game matters at this point for them. This is a really good slate. I like the structure. Actually, I don't. Eh. I, I think I'd like an eight and a ten more than an eight and a nine. But who knows? You can get to bed uh, a little early. It's weird. I've I've had a very hungover energy today, even though I it was just from like eating snacks and smoking pot. I haven't drank or anything. I feel very like lethargic and awful. So maybe an early night will do me good. I don't Thank know. I'd say uh, if we're doing slate grades, I'll I'll do a podcast grade, and I say that you've been in the A minus A uh, order. So it's been a pretty solid. Not even a thought of a B plus for you. So if you're, this is your hungover show, congrats. You weren't thinking about the doghouse for me. Don't lie. Definitely not. Definitely not. I, I was thinking about the doghouse for you in the five minutes that we recorded the fake podcast before we went live. But uh, when we got the redo, you took advantage. I was really mailing it in that first. It was I showed. Ugh. It's like you knew we weren't live. You weren't wasting your fucking energy on the on the fake show. I still had my like uh, makeup towel thing on and everything (laughs) just uh fuck what do you guys want i called the listeners uh what chaos listeners it was gross disgusting have we ever established i may have asked this before is this an a plus grading scale because like i've been i I, like i went a minus by the way for this go on no yeah and uh i've been i've been like some schools can there be an a plus some don't oh like is this an a plus scale or is this just to an a i mean you don't want There's to be the teacher who never gives out an A plus. That's a well, you, that's like your automatic asshole. Some schools don't even use A plus. Like I think it, I don't forget. I forget if it was ASU or Syracuse. I'm pretty sure ASU did not use the A plus. So like it, you could only get an A. Wow. Well, that's bullshit. I just wasn't sure if your scale potentially like could good go up for an A plus, plus. Or if it capped at A. Acting like you're too good for an A plus is big time asshole watch. I mean, like ah. if there is like if. It, Game, but we're for sure, by the way, going to give slight grades during the playoffs. Uh, <laughs> yes. Like during the Stanley Cup final. Stanley Cup game seven. A minus. A minus, right? <laughs> I feel like that could be a good conversation. Like th- this podcast host gave game seven of the Stanley Cup final an A minus. Because it's getting played in like on the West Coast. So it's, you know, time's a little weird. No, it's just it's just only, only one game. Bad As structure. a hockey fan, you're not a true hockey fan if you're happy with one game on the schedule that night. So A minus for Game Seven of the Stanley Cup Final. Also, I just want to say, on in theory, I am anti A plus. A plus seems like a complete made up bullshit. It's like 110. percent It doesn't exist. Oh. Like if they, how do you get more than an A? Break. Well, I, I, mean, I need to, I need to meet so I can't get into this whole conversation. But you're on asshole watch. No, I mean A plus is 97 because that's what you make A plus, but it shouldn't exist. Like A plus is. A plus A is a A is perfect. A plus implies more than perfect, which doesn't exist unless you get an extra credit. I'm gonna start giving out A pluses. <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> fine. Slate. That's fine if they want to add extra games to it. Then sure. I mean, I've only just going from my heart. I've only given out A minuses and A's. Mm. So that's why I was. That's what maybe I'm. Um, maybe I'm connecting with you there a little bit. I'm staring into the back of my skull. My eyes are rolling so far back. Is that A plus take from from Sean? Listen, I I was. Uh, you know, I was a very good student. I had plenty of A pluses in my day. I just they don't mean anything. They don't mean anything to me. It's not helping your oh cause. Oh my asshole. god, I would have <laughs> hated you. I, I was joking. I, I was joking. I did not get a lot of A pluses. I did not try and. Call they it. hand back the the oh, test. It says A plus, and Sean's like, "This means nothing to me." Oh, I did not try in school. I didn't. I didn't. I, once I got to college, I get, I got to a, a very quickly. I got to a, oh, they don't check your. No one asked for transcripts. Why am I trying? Kind of attitude. And I just I just all I wanted was to pass. All right, that's our producer. That's <laughs> th- th- that's that's our uh, that's our fail. Marlo will be our former producer, Sean. Oh <laughs> uh, no, he's the best, and you all are the best. We will talk to you tomorrow on. <laughs> Like the mayor, 